welcome back. So, today we will conclude the concept uh, the discussion on solar cell. So, if you remember in the last class we had introduced a lot of new concepts on solar cell like uh, short circuit current, open circuit voltage, how the different band gap semiconductors will have different advantage and disadvantages. We had discussed the IV characteristics of a PN junction in the presence of light illumination, solved the, disc uh, the continuity equation and used that solution of the equation to derive the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. I told you that the open circuit voltage and short circuit current both have to be high in order for the solar cell to be efficient and deliver more power, but there is a limit of course on everything you cannot arbitrarily have very high values there. Uh, diffusion lengths and minority carrier lifetimes all these are very important concept in solar cell they should ideally be very high uh, and I told you the top layer has to be thin so that you absorb minimum photons which are wasted in the in the useless in the neutral region you do not contribute to electricity you want the photons to be absorbed in the depletion region only. So, the top layer is highly doped the bottom layer is lightly doped. We also found out the bottom layer should be ideally little higher doped so that the you know sh the short circuit current or the open circuit voltage improves. But the problem is you cannot drop the, the, the dope it very high because the tunneling will increase that is another thing ok. So, I told you there was a trade off you cannot have an arbitrarily high band gap semiconductor or an arbitrarily lower band gap semiconductor there is a trade off between the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So, you have to get the optimum band gap ok. So, today we shall derive that limit and also discuss a few things on how to improve the efficiency of the solar cell what is fill factor and so on and so forth ok. So, let us come to the whiteboard. So, in the last class if you recall I told you there are two important things I will again keep drawing the IV characteristics so, so that is embedded in your mind. So, this is your ideal characteristics here in presence of light is becomes like this ok. Uh, of course, this is your I this is your V this quantity is your photo current or you can call it short circuit current that quantity photo current or short circuit current whatever you say you know it has given by q a the optical generation rate typically it will be given by the diffusion length of electron diffusion length of holes plus the depletion width ok. Because you have a solar cell here all the electrons that are going has to be swept this way holes that are have to be swept that way and then you have a open circuit voltage here that open circuit voltage also is a very important parameter open circuit voltage goes as k t by q log of 1 plus i photon by I mean I, I the short circuit by i dark this i dark has to be low it has to be low in order for the open circuit voltage to be high ok and this i naught depends on q a d p by l p into n i square by n d. So, one thing is that if you use a wide band gap material your n i square will be low that is why your dark current will be low your open circuit voltage will be very high. But there is a problem I told you wide band gap material will absorb only a small fraction of the sunlight maximum portion of the sunlight will be not absorbed and will be wasted. So, that is a bad thing if you use a short band gap material you will absorb all the sunlight, but the problem is that your n i square this quantity will be very high for a small band gap material this quantity is very high it means your open circuit voltage will be very small. In typical open circuit voltage goes proportional to the band gap of the material if your band gap is high open circuit voltage will be high, but you will waste most of the solar spectra. Similarly, if you use a lower band gap material you are going to get very high short circuit current, but lower band gap means your open circuit voltage will be low. So, there is a trade off ok there is a severe trade off that you have to actually uh, live with you cannot do much about it ok. So, uh, let us come to that thing again I know in context of this I will tell you ok in this context I will tell you what you have to do. So, uh, you know if you look realistically the short circuit current or the photo current whatever you say essentially uh, from to, to get an idea of how the short, short circuit current behaves with respect to photon flux and all you know one photon h nu one photon ideal case is that it should give you one electron hole pair you agree one photon should be able to give you one electron hole pair in the best case scenario which means your short circuit current or your photo current will depend on the photon flux photon flux times the charge of electron which is q 1.6 minus 19 coulomb photon flux actually is uh, how many photons are there per unit wavelength of the solar spectra ok. So, essentially photon flux is your energy distribution of the sunlight 
which is your energy spectra that I we keep talking about energy distribution of sunlight divided by the energy of each photon which is h c by lambda lambda keeps changing right. So, if you recall you had your energy the, the, the energy of the sunlight in kilowatt per meter square per nanometer. So, it looks something like this right this is around 2 micron the peak is around 500 nanometer this is around 300 nanometer right this is on 300 nanometer now at this is wavelength this is wavelength so at different wavelengths you have different power here this is of course not am1 this is am0 outside the atmosphere inside the atmosphere of course you will have a different spectra you will have a spectra like uh, some 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 absorption will happen right like that because some water vapor and other things will absorb anyways that is you can take the real so if you divide this quantity by h c by lambda which means the energy at each point energy at this point energy at this point this point this point energy at each point if you divide that is h c by lambda lambda is different at this each point then and h c by lambda is joule by the way so if you derive kilowatt per meter square per nanometer if you divide it by joule what will happen kilowatt is nothing but kilowatt is nothing but kilo joule per second. So, what will happen is that you will get number of photons the unit will be number of photons per second ok per second per meter square per nanometer for each nanometer right because your joule joule will cancel. So, this is your photon flux number of photons number of photons per second ok per centimeter square per nanometer. So, if you integrate this over if you integrate this over a band gap suppose I take a band gap which is suppose this I take this band gap which means I absorb everything here I do not absorb everything above that. So, then I can integrate this area so that this nanometer term goes away because you are integrating with respect to nanometer here you will get number of photons number of photons per second per unit area you multi if you integrate this part and then you multiply the charge of electron you will get coulomb this is coulomb per second that is ampere you will get ampere per centimeter square number of photons will give you that thing no number of electrons holes one one electron pair hole from one photon best case. So, you will get current that you will get the short circuit current in amp per centimeter square or amp per meter square that is what you do ok. So, if you do that and if you take a if you take a wide band gap material then you are you know here for example then you only absorb this if you take a narrow band gap material like the band gap is here then you absorb everything here you do not absorb this you can do that ok. So, you can do that integration and find out the current what you can do is that you can then plot the maximum short circuit current or the photo current that you can get from the photon flux of the sun as a function of energy as a function of energy of the band gap of the material because this is 0 for example of course, 0 may nothing will 0 0.5 EV and this is suppose 2.5 EV. So, this is 1 EV this is 1.5 EV this is 2.0 EV right. So, this is the thing. So, if I look at AM 0 illumination which means outside the atmosphere it will become something like this with higher band gap your short circuit current will decrease that I told you qualitatively at smaller band gap you see at smaller band gap you are going to absorb everything no. So, you are going to get more short circuit current ok at wider band gap material if the band gap you know this is your spectra if your band gap is here ok you will only absorb this much. So, your short circuit current will be low. So, that is what it means if your band gap is high like 2.5 EV your short circuit current also will be low at lower band gap you will have large short circuit current what is the axis here axis go from 0 and this is your amp per centimeter square milliamp per centimeter square and you know up to 60 maybe milliamp 50 40 30 20 10. If you talk about uh, AM 1.5 which means inside the atmosphere in the evening sort of thing then you will start from maybe 50 and you will go back to maybe less than 10 like this. This is AM this and this is AM 0 ok. So, for example, if you use a band gap of silicon which is 1.1 EV 1.1 EV you will probably get around maybe 30 milliamp per centimeter square if you use germanium which is 0.7 maybe you will get 40 milliamp per centimeter square if you use you know uh, gallium arsenide which is 1.4 you are going to get maybe 15 20 milliamp per centimeter square. So, your short circuit current will become better or higher if your band gap is lower ok. So, that much we know now 
okay. Now, uh, what about this is the short circuit limit under limit under short circuit current, right? This is the limit on the short circuit current or photo current. Now, there is also a limit on open circuit voltage and that will have a reverse impact on this, okay. With higher band gap material, you will have a higher open circuit voltage. So, open circuit voltage is k t by q l n 1 plus i photo current by i dark current okay. and uh, if you take this i dark current you know q a if I take both n and p side then of course d p by l p you know this will be n i square 1 by n d plus d n by l n 1 by n a sort of thing right. So, now for the best case silicon your band gap is around 1.1 E V but not all the band gap will be converted to open circuit voltage, open circuit voltage will be typically around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volt only ok. So, that is not a good thing, but this is the limit I mean you cannot get more than that, but anyways this depends on the uh, depends on the these factors as well as n i square, n i square is very important. So, that is why you need a this n i square, this n i square is proportional to the e to the power minus e g by k t, which means and this is ln by the way. So, it is like open circuit voltage is equal to k t by q ln if I ignore this one it will be like i photon by i dark, but i dark depends on n i square and n i square depends on e to the power minus e g by k t. So, this ln and e it will make sure that your open circuit voltage is loosely proportional to band gap that is why I keep telling you ok. So, you know with you can say that open circuit voltage depends on the other parameters also here also it depends on you know. Uh, the, the, the diffusion length and other things, but with higher band gap this is your E g, with higher band gap your open circuit voltage also will increase. So, if you have gallium nitride at 3.4 E v your open circuit voltage will be very high, if you use silicon then your open circuit voltage will be 0 0.7 volt. So, that is why now the problem is that, what is the problem? The problem is that your open circuit voltage and this is your band gap of the semiconductor ok what band gap will you use? Semiconductor of, uh, conductor of what band gap will be better? Open circuit voltage will go linearly as band gap and then you have short circuit current or the photo current. This is your band gap. Your short circuit current comes down as with the band gap and you will see very soon that your efficiency of the solar cell in some way I will come to that efficiency of the solar cell is proportional to the open circuit voltage multiplied by short circuit current that is the efficiency of the solar cell. Do you know why? That that is how it is there actually. I okay, will come to that soon. So, essentially when you do that optimal your you know optimal efficiency your efficiency of the solar cell I have not defined efficiency yet, but I will define it very soon because your you know with respect to band gap this is say 0 0.5 this is say 3 V or something you know what one of them uh, the current comes like this the voltage rise like this. So, I mean the open circuit voltage. So, you now know how it will look like. It will look like something like this the efficiency and the peak efficiency will occur at a band gap of around 1.4, 1.5 electron volt. This is silicon by the way 1.0 ok. And of course, this efficiency curve also will depend if this is a m 0 then your a m 1.5 will be different little bit. It will be little different actually a m 1.5 although it will be low at, at the peak actually a m 1.5 will be little higher for some reason ok let us not come to that. Anyways the peak will be almost here and this efficiency that you get here this efficiency the maximum efficiency that you can get here is around um, 33 to 35 percent if I recall ok. And silicon silicon gives you around you know 25 to 29 percent. So, silicon is not the best band gap, but it is not low either. Silicon gives you fairly high efficiency. The best efficiency will come from around 1.5 EV and you know gallium arsenide 1.5, 1.4 gallium arsenide has a band gap of 1.42 EV. So, that is almost optimal band gap to get the highest efficiency. So, highest efficiency solar cells can be made with gallium arsenide based devices uh, that is 35 percent, but that is expensive also by the way 35 percent you can get single junction 33, 35 percent. Uh, and silicon will give you around 25 29 percent uh, best case which is not very bad. So, it is still there, uh, but of course, the solar cells will not have like 100 percent or 90 percent efficiency the best single junction solar cell or single material solar cell is only that much 33 35 percent no more ok. Because your band gap condition comes no, because your band gap restriction comes that is why this happens there ok. 
and uh, you know if you remember this of course the peak of this at 1.5 EV will correspond correspond to around I think uh, lambda of how much it will be around 1242 by you know 1.5 so maybe around 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 micron like 750 or 800 nanometer. So, if you look at the solar spectra where is the solar spectra solar spectra is here right. So, this is solar spectra. So, maybe actually you know this is the peak at 500, but actually around 750 or 800 nanometer you have this is the band this, this corresponds to by the way 1.5 electron volt your efficiency is peak here. So, this much you have to absorb this will anyways reject because you know you cannot you have to trade off between the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage that is why that happens ok. So, this limit this limit that you have here is uh, called uh, the Shockley quasar limit Shockley uh, quasar limit. So, that limit puts uh, you know this this kind of condition commercial silicon solar cells will be probably 15 to 20 percent efficient you actually get silicon solar cells that are very high efficient but many of the cheap solar cells that are very low cost 12 15 percent efficient amorphous solar cell crystalline solar cell close to 20 22 percent probably not more so much because this is the best solar cell efficiency people are already achieving I mean silic it has been demonstrated but the commercial ones you cannot the better efficiency you want to get the more costly it will become no because you have to refine the silicon and so many things. So, you know amorphous silicon solar cell 12 15 percent you know that is pretty good you get very cheap cheap uh, cost ok. So, that is the thing. Uh, you cannot have of course, 100 percent efficiency uh, big, you know there is an always an entropy loss there is a black body radiation loss and so on and this is the band gap concept that is why this is uh, the band gap concept puts this kind of a restriction. Uh, now, I have talked about efficiency, but let me talk about uh, what is efficiency actually although I have already talked about efficiency and also if you recall the the IV characteristics ok again I will draw the IV characteristics. I will draw the IV characteristics of only solar cell now I will not draw the PN junction normal I it is a PN junction under illumination. So, it will look like this right ok this is your open circuit voltage this is your photo current or short circuit current. I told you whenever you connect a load then what happens is that your load will self bias and it will make sure that it gets biased at some voltage here V m and some current will come here I m this is where you operate the solar cell you are going to get not the entire short circuit current you are going to get only I m current you are not going to get entire voltage because if you operate at this point there will be no current in the device your power will be 0 power that you are delivering to the load power that they are delivering to the load is excuse me, what voltage you are actually having in the solar cell junction times what is the current excuse me that is coming out. If you actually make sure that there is an open circuit voltage to get maximum voltage your current will be 0 your current will be 0 your low your power also will be 0. If you also operate the device such that you have all the short circuit current coming out, but the voltage is 0 at this point then also the power will be 0. So, the power has to be optimum at some point the load has to be adjusted according to that. So, you are getting this. So, this square you see is actually the power that you are delivering to the load I m times V m that is your power that you are delivering to the load and this power that how and how you know this power this 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 one ok divided by the product of I s c into V o c this quantity multiplied by this quantity this is called the fill factor f f this fill factor is a measure of how square this profile is you know see this 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 iv that is going how square this is this should be as square as possible then only your fill factor will be better and fill factor being high is very important for a better efficiency device also by the way ok. Your fill factor is very important. So, this is your fill factor um, you know that is the ratio of the power that you are delivering divided by voc into isc that is your fill factor and efficiency is defined as what is the power you are delivering to the load which is your power load the load which is your V m into I m divided by what is the input power from the sun sunlight is shining there no. So, this V m I m can be written as fill factor times V o c into I s c by the optical power input from the sun that is why efficiency is proportional to fill factor which means how square this is sort of thing where you are putting it biasing here and also is proportional to the product of short circuit current and open circuit voltage that is why I was telling you that for a higher efficiency solar cell for getting power you need to have this kind of higher 
open circuit voltage higher short circuit current also ok. Uh, the, the technically practically speaking the open circuit voltage that you measure the open circuit voltage that you actually measure actually get is around 75 to 80 percent of what you expect of what you expect and that is because your solar cell has this sort of structure you no know, p plus n sort of thing because the top layer is very highly doped because it is very highly doped your band gap of the top layer becomes slightly lower the band gap becomes little lower minority carrier concentration you know the minority carrier lifetime suffers other, recomb other kind of recombination happen. So, all these things makes your efficiency or your open circuit voltage go slightly down like 80 percent of what is expected because your top band gap becomes lower reduces because of extremely high doping ok. So, that you should keep in mind ok and uh, between you know you can have either a structure like this you can either have a structure like p plus n very thin p or you can have a structure like n plus p very thin n of course. You can have either of these two structures, but preferably this structure is better because you know electrons injected to the this side electrons have a higher better diffusion length they have better diffusion length and carrier lifetime than holes than holes. So, you can say that n plus will get better you know uh, electrons will have better properties because electrons are ba basically the, the, the carrier here. So, much so electro n plus p is generally preferred than p plus n ok that is one thing and how to increase efficiency of solar cells, uh, but before that I will quickly draw you the uh, how, how you cannot increase the solar cell efficiency of a single junction anyways. I will draw you the circuit diagram for solar cell just in case ok this is important. Essentially what happens is that a solar cell is like a battery. So, you have this current source which I call the I photo or whatever this is your current source this you know when sunlight falls here you get this current out right and this current is in the direction opposite to the ideal diode current. So, I will keep that as I naught ok this is the ideal diode current and you eventually have a load here on which you basically deliver current and you are developing the voltage across this load ok. But the problem is that there is there are two parasitic resistances one is a series resistance called RRS series resistance and one is called shunt resistance shunt resistance these are these are parasitic resistances or unwanted resistances that are there in the solar cell which affect your performance this this series series resistance comes because of series volt resistance that in the circuit. So, essentially in a PN junction this represents the voltage that is dropping across the neutral region. So, you have like P plus N. So, this neutral region has a voltage no this contact has a voltage this contact has a voltage I mean resistance or resistance this contact has a resistance also in a PN junction the neutral region will have some resistance all these are unnecessary these are love, these are affecting the device. So, those are series resistance you should not want a device with higher series resistance because you will be dropping unnecessary voltage on them mm -hmm. the contact the neutral region and so on. This is shunt resistance these are like parallel path if you are if you have a silic you know device wafer and then you, you have like a p n junction for example this will refer to the defects and dislocations if you have through which top down there can be leakage this is a bottom contact this is a top contact is there defects and dislocations here what will happen then you will have you know a surface leakage maybe you will have this leakage path which run parallel to the actual device so these are shunt resistances you want to also lower the shunt resistances ok but this is your equivalent circuit of your uh, solar cell ok equivalent circuit of a solar cell and uh, the way one way is to actually and the increase the efficiency a single junction solar cell gallium arsenide with a band gap of 1.4 eV will give you the maximum efficiency of around 35 percent or 33 percent ok single. But what you can do is that there is something called multi junction solar cell these are not used for like day to day lighting these are used these are very expensive, but this can give you very high efficiency these are used for space and other applications where cost is not important where performance is more important ok. This can give you performance if I recall up to I think 45 or 46 percent maybe even more I forgot efficiencies have been demonstrated in multi junction solar cells some of them are used in space a uh, multi junction solar cell you use materials of different band gap to absorb different part of the spectra. So, you might have a gallium arsenide that will absorb 1.4 eV then you might have indium gallium arsenide you might have indium gallium phosphide ok gallium phosphide these different materials will absorb different part of the spectra. So, this is a sunlight no 
so gallium arsenide will absorb that what about the rest so you use in gas in gas band gap might be here so that you absorb this then in gap might be here so you absorb you absorb everything so that you absorb everything without compromising on the open circuit voltage so much and you these are all on top of each other these are not separate devices that are you are bonding or sticking with a glue these are grown epitaxial remember growth of epitaxial material mbe mocvd these are grown epitaxially which means material on top of each layer has to mimic the crystal structure below so the material science material challenge is huge because these are dissimilar materials you will have defects and dislocations that will form at the interface because they are different materials those will also kill the device so you may not get the best advantage so the material science is very heavy here you want to grow them epitaxially with a superior material and crystal quality overcoming the defects and dislocations that will come up so that you can stack up different material and you join them by layers called tunnel junction narrow band gap material called tunnel junction tj tunnel junctions which essentially allow the carriers to tunnel between two different layers this is a complicated thing you don't have to study but you just know that there is this multi junction solar cells so that different junction will approach different solar cell spectra it will absorb it will give you a very high efficiency of 45 46% depending on the design infinite number of junction can be stacked up but technically you can get 67 60% or 70% efficiency theoretically if you in stack up infinite number of junctions of different band gap the material science will not allow it please remember material science will not allow it because different growing infinite number of layers of different material will have a lot of stress problem there will be a lot of strain mismatch epitaxial issues material quality so that will not allow you to do that but theoretically you can okay not practically please remember that okay so these are epitaxial growth techniques that are done uh, this is also a very area of research that has been you know going on but now perovskites are uh, perovskites are complex oxides that have come very recently but these are growing up crazy because they are having very high efficiency of almost up to 25 percent now within a few years of research so these people people are going very crazy on perovskite solar cell you can also google a perovskite solar cell you know that's a very hot topic of research and although i have not shown here you can google up something like uh, solar cell efficiency solar cell efficiency versus year which year had how much solar cell efficiency this was i think a, this is a classic a very classic plot is there and it was by martin green the person's name is martin green okay uh, if you search for it you will get a plot and that plot is uh, like a very sacred plot for solar cell you have efficiency in terms of percentage in this and then on the y axis you have year i think right from like 1920s to like 2018 okay and it will show you different technology like silicon technology will how it is growing the gallium arsenide technology how it is growing perovskites coming here and going like this all these different technologies will be shown here okay that's a very important graph to you know just to be aware of where the solar cell technologies are heading by okay so solar cell of course dominantly silicon solar cells are still widely used and they will be used they are cheap also very good efficiency you can get there are also organic solar cells and other kinds of solar cells which might be cheaper uh, people have been doing a lot of research in this area uh, so in this uh, I think we are now ready to wind up the lecture here we have uh, finished the discussion on solar cell most of the important things that we had to know like fill factor efficiency short circuit current the band gap the short liquidizer limit uh, minority diffusion length like mercury lifetime all these are covered uh, so we are done with solar cell now so you now know how the solar cells work uh, you can correlate yourself what is the efficiency if someone says Oh, commercially I have a solar cell that is 18% efficient or 22% efficient you know where you stand right if someone gives you a crap like oh I have a 50% efficient solar cell that I have on my rooftop you know that person is basically not speaking the truth right all these things you know now so you can also calculate the amount of current that you can get from the area of the solar cell you know the short circuit current you can do those calculations there will be realistic estimates on the cloud cover and uh, dust particles and all these things are realistic but practically I am the theoretically I am speaking uh, next class we shall begin uh, photo detectors which is very similar to solar cell very very similar to solar cell except that sunlight is not the only source you might want to detect ultraviolet you might want to detect infrared visible whatever right so in photo detectors are very similar to solar cell but they are operated in third quadrant okay so that will be our agenda for the next couple of lectures so thank you for your time